All right, thank you for your uh, presentation. And I think we have one more final speaker, I think, if that's correct. Hello. Yes, how are you? That's me, good, how are you? Good. Uh, fine, are you able to uh, share your screen in your presentation? Yes, uh, with pleasure. All right. All right, let's do that. Do you see my screen? I do, just uh, go ahead and hop it and pre. There we go, all right, so go <laughs> ahead and uh, look forward to your presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, well, first, I would like to um, thank uh, Dr. Hanadi for piloting this initiative uh, by the, uh, the ecosystem of consultants. And I'm very glad to be with you today. Uh, so I'm Sana El Wali, Moroccan citizen, and uh, I have worked um, during my career, private, public sector, and then at the end for development institution running a program, support program for SMEs and value chain competitiveness in Morocco and Tunisia. So I will uh, walk you through uh, a little bit of the global trends that we are really uh, living today, best practices, and then we'll end up with a case from Morocco. So of course, everybody knows and all of us uh, live with that today in the new normal uh, characterized by, by uh, automation, uh, basically digitalization, artificial intelligence with all the challenges, um, social, environmental, and geopolitics also. And of course, this has been accelerated by COVID-19 that have impacted the way we live and the way we work. So few numbers to share about that, um, according to the World Economic Forum last reports, uh, COVID have accelerated by 83%, uh, remote working digitalization by 84% and 50% of um, automation. And of course, this is expected to go up in 2025 um, from 30, 30, uh, 33% today to 47% um, in 2025. And uh, while talking about that, we cannot ignore the impact, of course, uh, that uh, many of you today have been talking about and yesterday about the skilling needs and the, uh, in terms of the skills and building the capacities of, uh, of the employees and, uh, and the youth actually and the younger generation. Um, so basically it is expected, um, there is an expected need of 50% of the current employees in terms of their um, reskilling needs in, uh, uh, by 2025. The top priorities in these skills have been innovation, uh, will be innovation in 2025, and it's already um, entrepreneurship uh, that have been very in high demand for um, this year, for 2020. So all of that to say and to confirm that uh, if we don't interrupt ourselves and if the companies do not interrupt uh, themselves, then others will do for them. This have, uh, as I said, Steve Jobs. So um, some of the um, best practices and talking about um, ecosystem, how this relates basically to ecosystems is basically we have been testing during the lockdown. Uh, many of us have been testing the integrated platforms and all the uh, easiness, I would say, and the comfort uh, that have been offering that was offered to us by uh, some of the platform that makes our journey easier. And this is basically what, um, what the expected, I would say, uh, impact of COVID COVID on the development opportunity of ecosystems today. Uh, so basically it is estimated, um, there is an estimation by uh, latest report McKinsey, uh, it's an estimation of 60 trillion um, uh, dollars actually that is expected to create by uh, 2025. And this of course that covers a lot of um, sectors uh, including B2B. However, um, however, one of the major problems with ecosystems, uh, some of the, the, that was uh, that was of course um, uh, studied, is the is the failure of some companies actually to benefit out of the ecosystem, since only ten percent actually can get and get uh, financial benefits out of it. 
So some of the uh, best practices, uh, many have been shared today, uh, but from a building uh, ecosystem point of view is, um, is to, to have in mind three things. Uh, the first one is the impacts. What impact value chains actually, uh, sorry, value chains ecosystems uh, need, to, need to have and want to create actually. And the second thing is what type of value we want to create. And basically the, uh, the, 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 uh, the value created through integrated ecosystem needs to be higher than the single value that a customer or a client can get from a single service that they can access uh, directly. And uh, one of the major one that we notice and especially uh, from our countries in my country is the uh, is the cost actually some of the platform exists but however um, basically they are not offering uh, lower costs and this is what the clients basically is the from clients point of view are looking for or a better journey um, so some of the platforms especially in banking sector exist but however uh, they don't offer a lower I would say um, cost or any additional um, value actually or uh, to the uh, to the users uh, so basically uh, to conclude on the uh, in the ecosystem 2.0 um, is basically there are a lot of advantages some of which would, would are, are are basically deepening the customer knowledge uh, enlarging the customer base existing in tra traditional um, value chains and of course creating more data that's low um, better crafting of the offer and of course all of that of course to um, simplify the customer journey so where we are in Morocco, uh, so uh, briefly, I will be talking about the entrepreneurial mind, uh, ecosystem in Morocco and the startup ecosystem. So it is a growing um, ecosystem and it is consolidating, especially during the past um, two years. And this has been supported a lot by, uh, by the public institutional supports. And we have, for example, the uh, Innov Invest. Uh, uh, so these are state funded, uh, these are owned fund and are financed um, by, the, uh, by the World Bank. And actually it is vehicled through um, some uh, like 16 incubators today in Morocco that transfer, um, that work a lot on advisory and also technical supports and tailor the grants uh, to, the, uh, to the entrepreneurs uh, in different uh, in different cycle of their projects, either yeah, I mean the, they are a specific one pre seed seeds and and uh, and uh, and capital ventures, uh, either from the ideation to the commercialization of their projects. Uh, ADD is a digital development agency, basically that was created to support the uh, uh, and the implementation of the digitalization strategy um, in Morocco. Different initiatives also international and national to support the existing uh, ecosystem and of course very growing and dynamics in the uh, between private and public sector, especially some sectors uh, like telecom uh, banking sectors and large corporations that have been investing a lot in creating um, collaborations and their own some uh, their own and supporting the uh, incubator uh, incubation and uh, early stage startups. Of course, uh, I'm happy to be in the same panel than Olga because I will be using some of the referring to the uh, to the GIA, uh, basically the Global Innovation Index uh, for Morocco in here. So some of the challenges that Morocco still have is basically education, uh, human capital and research, and of course uh, the linkages, innovation linkages to create between uh, industry and science. Uh, also, uh, I mean, this has been said, university research, of course, collaboration, and still the GV strategic deals in Morocco are still low. Some of the good examples that I would like um, to illustrate here, it's what uh, OCP basically is doing. OCP is the word, uh, is the leading actually Moroccan uh, company uh, exporter of phosphates in Morocco and, uh, and fertilizers, and fertilizers. And today it's as present in five continents. And basically OCP um, have made innovation, education and community developments strategic, uh, strategic move in its uh, strategic priority in its, uh, in its strategy today. So OCP is doing a lot 
in terms of uh, creating this dynamic and uh, and creating innovative um, driven uh, entrepreneurship ecosystems. So the first thing is doing is basically also uh, driving the entrepreneurial, I would say, mindset and diffusing this type of culture inside the company uh, through creating what they call the movements. So it's basically a movement to support their own employees in uh, in creating, initiating, and developing projects that are taken to R and D. Uh, and this is also it's supported through the, uh, the resources allocation of resources, the needed resources, and the funding. Uh, OCP Entrepreneurship Network is another initiative that basically connects the local entrepreneurs and the community with um, disruptive ideas and and OCP. And there is a lot of support um, that is actually um, offered through women entrepreneurs in the region and also cooperatives. Um, and, uh, and the big one actually is also the OCP support to education and reskillings, basically, uh, and building the capacity in terms of entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial skills in the, uh, in the region. And this have been actually um, initiated by uh, by them funding uh, the Mohammed VI Polytechnic University, UM6P. Basically, that it positions itself today as as a hub for innovation and for uh, solving uh, African challenges. Basically, so it's a connecting hub uh, between higher uh, level education industry support R and D and support to the local uh, community. And it's basically offering all the the platform. There is a platform for that, um, accelerators, specific accelerators, of course, for uh, for their own value chain uh, in biotech, uh, biotech, agri-tech, basically, and uh, mining and uh, material science, and also horizontal incubators that, that connect the community um, with, with OCP. And thank you. I don't know. I think I have been too brief, but I wanted not to <laughs> run on time. So I'm glad uh, to be here with you and, and happy uh, to connect and stay here if there are any questions. All right, thank you for your time. I think we will be moving into a uh, panel soon uh, for about 10 minutes. Uh, just wanna confirm, is this another speaker that's in line or um, are we good to go to move into our uh, panel discussion? Hi, uh, this is Rohit from Clarivate. I believe uh, I should be the next.